Hey guys, Martin Singer here bringing another Dragon Ball Z Dokkan battle video and so we are going to be talking about the physical Topo banner that is going to be dropping tomorrow on Global. Uh, this video is going up at 10pm UK time, uh, which is what, like 2pm Pacific uh, and then like 5pm... Yeah, 5 p.m. Eastern, something like that. Basically, if you know your normal global times, this video is going up nine and a half hours before the banner is going to be releasing. So we're going to take a look at the banner, how it looked on JP, and talk about a few of the differences for global. And of course, answer the question of the title of the video, which is, should you summon for Topo or should you skip? So... First off, before we do anything else, we'll take a look at how the banner looked on JP. Now, the banner had the thing because it came out around that time for getting the Super Saiyan Hercule statues. Uh, we got that for Freezer instead. I think we also had it on something else. So, I mean, there's a possibility that this comes back again, but I wouldn't necessarily think so. The featured units are the Physical Topo, the new banner unit, Catapesla. Uh, then we have the Int Tournament of Power Androids returning for the very first time. Tech Trunks, AGL Kale, STL Gamma 1, AGL Gamma 2, and then there's a random SR Trunks, which I guess is just like super attack fodder for this guy. So overall, the banner is interesting because you've got Topo, he's good, he's the new unit, you've got his banner unit. You've got the Int on the Power Androids returning for the first time with how good the Universe 7 team is now because of all the easy A's. These guys don't even necessarily have a spot on the team, but if you're missing one or two of those big LRs, they definitely can work on the team as a support unit. Um, they can even be a 200% leader for the team if you're missing any of the units that give that team a 200% lead. Because a lot of people have the six year LRs, but of course their leader skill is only 180%. So if you're missing the tech UI, in fact, I think if you're missing the Tech UI, they are the 200% lead for that team. If you want to be running like the Six Years, uh, Freezer and 17, Team Universe 7, STR UI, Goku, like these guys will be the only 200% leader for that team. So they definitely can be very useful. Um, Tech Trunks, I mean, he's a big meme, but like as bad as he is in the Super Saiyan form, uh, when he becomes Super Trunks, he is actually still really good. Um, Kale is in a bit of a weird spot. We still need more Universe 6 buffs. And then you've got Gamma 1 and Gamma 2 just got unique orbs and, of course, a buff with the release of the LR Gammas from the anniversary. So these guys are still pretty good as well. And they haven't been on a banner for a while, I think. So there's obviously potentially people out there that will still need extra copies of them as well. So if we take a quick look at Topo, Topo is an interesting unit. He leads special pose or tournament participants uh, for three key 170. And then he has the extra 30 for Defenders of Justice, Space Traveling Warriors or Final Trump card. So obviously this has a lot of the, uh, of course it has like the Universe 11 characters and stuff like that because they are on Defenders of Justice and then of course tournament participants. But then by having special pose and Space Traveling Warriors, he has characters like the Ginyu Force. So like the LR Ginyu Force who won a special pose team. Um, and of course, even characters like the Gammas, who uh, I think the LR Gammas are on Final Trump card, and they're a very good support unit for special pose. Even if they're not, they're on the special pose team. The 170 Gammas are, of course... Oh, no, they're all on Defenders of Justice, obviously. So the Gammas, both the single ones and the LRs, are on his 200% team as well. So that's very good. He has an entrance animation. He gets 11% damage reduction for the rest of the battle and guards attacks for three turns with his intro buff, which he gets if there are two or more special pose or defenders of justice allies on the team from his entry turn. He gets 200% attack and defense, additional 150 attack when performing a super, damage reduction of 20%, change in orbs to rainbow orbs if HP is 50% or more at the start of the turn, special pose and defenders of justice category allies key one and attack and defense 30%. Additional defense 200%, guards all attacks within the same turn, uh, defense 50% after receiving an attack as the first attacker in the turn. So once he gets hit for the first time, he gets a big defensive buff, um, guard for the rest of the turn, um, and then it says defense... Um, actually, he gets plus an additional 250%, guards all attacks, then there's a comma, defense 50% after receiving an attack. Plus an additional attack and defense 150 when performing a super as the second or third attacker in the turn. So the way that's worded is weird. Because it's special pose and defense of justice allies support. Then he gets an additional defense 200%, guards all attacks. And within the same turn, 
defense 50% after receiving an attack as the first attacker of the turn. So I don't know why why it's listed as him getting 200% defense and then getting 50% defense. That seems weirdly worded. But he gets extra defense guard damage reduction after he gets hit. Um, and then he can transform from the fourth turn from the start of battle when there is another special pose or Defenders of Justice ally attacking in the same turn or just from turn six without an, uh, another restriction. And then he becomes God of Destruction, Topo. So I didn't mention his super attack effect as well, which is greatly raise attack and defense for one turn, which is good. Uh, but when he transforms into God Topo, massively raise attack and then raise attack and defense for one turn. Immense damage to the enemy. Key 3, attack and defense 300, attack 250 when attacking, additional defense 100% when receiving an attack, changes in uh, key spheres to rainbow, guards, reduces damage received by 80%, and then he loses 8% damage reduction with each attack received, but no more than 60, so the minimum he'll go down to is 20. So each time he gets hit, he loses 8%. So he gets hit for the first time of the turn, he's got 80% damage reduction, then he takes the second hit, he's got 72%. So a dodge build for him is good, because if he dodges an attack, he then doesn't lose 8% damage reduction. He also nullifies Key Blast super attacks, uh, and from the next turn onward, high chance of nullifying Key Blast super attacks. So basically, the first Key Blast super that he faces, he will guaranteed nullify, and then after that, he has a high chance to nullify them. His active skill, Sphere of Destruction, massively raise attack temporarily, ultimate damage to the enemy, all attacks become crits for the rest of the battle. So that's really good. Starting from the sixth turn from start of battle. So if you've transformed him on turn six because of the lack of allies, which I mean, you're probably not running him on a team build like that anyway, but then you'd be able to use it straight away. And after you've used it, you get crits for the rest of the fight. So he doesn't really need a lot of crit. His super attack is very useful. He definitely feels like an additional or dodge character to me. Uh, then we have this guy. This guy is a character who I swear I'm never going to memorize his passive, even if I do pull him and end up using him. Because um, he raises attack and greatly raises defense in one turn on super, uh, supreme damage and seals. He gets key three, attack and defense 300%. Then he changes STR orbs to AGL. He gets two additional attacks, each of which has a high chance to become a super. He has a high chance to dodge and gets 30% defense per AGL key sphere obtained, up to 300%. Uh, then during the first, third, fifth, seventh, and ninth turn from his entry turn, he changes AGL orbs to STR, has a great chance of launching an additional attack, great chance of performing a crit and attack 30% per STR orb up to 300%. During the second, fourth, sixth, eighth, and tenth turn, he gets an additional attack and defense 33% when performing a super, changes AGL and STR orbs to tech, and then gets an additional 30% attack and defense per tech key sphere obtained up to 300%, starting from the seventh turn. So on each alternating turn, he's creating different orbs and building up a different buff. Um, it's very interesting. Like when he's fully built up, his numbers are okay, but he's just numbers. Like he doesn't have damage reduction. He doesn't have guard. So he's not like a crazy top tier banner unit, but certainly an interesting one to say the least. And then of course I brought up the Tornado of Power Androids just because they are this big ticket unit on the banner. I still think they are very useful. I mean, these guys, they do get um, damage reduction after attacking. Um, they have the Scouter when there's a Goku on rotation, which obviously works really well with the uh, Universe 7 team at the moment. So, I mean, these guys definitely are worthwhile. Um, even if you don't summon on the banner, picking them up with red coins potentially for the reps of Universe 7 team. I guess it depends on your coin total because really you want to be thinking about units like Broly, Beast Gohan and Tech UI Goku for your future red coin spendage. But yeah, the units on the banner are definitely interesting. Now we know from the data download, which I mentioned in the video earlier today, that we are getting not only tickets for this banner, which are just the purchasable tickets, but we have missions in the game now, which if you've done, you can actually have done them all and have the seven tickets. We are getting tickets for a weekend banner. And this is basically the same thing that JP did when Rosé came out um, on JP, where you do missions throughout the week to get tickets. And then there's a banner that's up at the weekend that you can use the tickets on. Now, as far as I know, you can only use the tickets on those banners. So you can't do extra summons with stones or anything like that. But the interesting thing is... Uh, I need to use a different view here. Um, this one? Nope, that's not good enough either. Uh, great. I don't think I have one that's more zoomed out than that. But basically, this was the banner for Rosé. Rosé, Vados, Broly, <laughs> the uh, Brienne... 
physical rib is below physical kefla and physical kale so it's basically six unfeatured like random general pool ssrs and then rose was on there so that means that the banner is going to be something like this where it's just a bunch of random unfeatured ssrs but then also topo and the interesting thing is when it comes to a lot of people when it comes to the big question of the video summon or skip um there's a lot of people that i'm thinking will probably be skipping this banner and um, this banner is coming out basically two weeks before the worldwide celebration starts uh, it's coming out right after UI Goku, who I, I would say is definitely worth summoning for more than this Topo. Um, so he's in a very awkward spot. I feel like he's a very easy skip for a lot of people just because of when he's coming out. But the interesting thing is, if you do skip his banner, you have the potential each weekend for the next couple of weeks. Do the missions throughout the week, get these tickets, do the summon on the banner and potentially pull topo from the ticket banner so obviously the chances are low right you've got these other horrible unfeatured ssrs but somebody out there will pull topo off of these tickets right and so it's something to think about like maybe if you do kind of want topo but can resist summoning straight away maybe use like the couple of weeks worth of free tickets first and then if you don't pull him then throw a couple of multis at the banner i imagine his banner will probably have um, discounted multis, um, we probably won't see something like the three plus one, but I could imagine like the first three multis being discounted or something like that. Maybe even with the third one being guaranteed featured. Dokon does like to do that with these filler banners to try and get you to part with your stones. But I do think that for most people, if you are free to play or you don't spend much on the game, this banner is a very easy skip. Topo is kind of cool and his team can be fun with like the Jiren EZA, Carnival Jiren coming out at some point, like that kind of stuff. But realistically, his team is not like a team you need to run. You don't need to get him, but he is like a fun unit if you do get him. So I would say for most people, his banner is an easy skip. If you're a spender, like if you're a whale or a collector, obviously there are the tickets there for you to purchase. So some people I'm sure will buy the ticket packs, pull them from the tickets, and then you don't even need to use stones on the banner. I personally, like if, if I get one copy of this guy, I'm done summoning. I definitely am not going crazy with summons before the worldwide celebration starts. So let me know what you guys think down below in the comments section. I know some people out there were hyped for Topo in the audience. So let me know if you are excited to summon for him. Let me know if you're skipping. Let me know all your thoughts on him and his banner down below in the comment section. So that is going to be it for the video, guys. This has been the Master Ningen. Smash that like button, subscribe to the channel if you are new. Check out all the links down below and I will see you all again soon. Have a good one.